what is irrational about it? What's irrational about the, the conversations the, around self-driving cars? Well, in fact, uh, this idea that well, as long as they have a driver at the wheel, then they're safe. Uh, right. So, so that defeats the whole reason of having a car being self-driven. Um, so, so I, I, I found it, you know, all, almost uh, laughable to talk about why don't we put a, a, a passenger or put a person there to manage a self-driven vehicle? I mean, what, is, what does that mean uh, altogether? So, so I think most of all the fatality or accidents are caused by humans today. Right? Um, as I pointed out in some of my writings, you know, over a, a, a billion. Um, yeah. 1.3 million fatalities every year around the world, 50 million people getting hurt, and 90% of that is because of people, people's errors, human errors. So, so I think we need to perfect the technology rather than saying, okay, let's just do a patchwork and put a, put a, uh, a, a driver in the car to manage a self-driven car. I mean, I, it, it just sounds funny to me. Clearly the technology isn't safe enough yet, but not having a driver there at all sounds a lot scarier. True. Um, so, first of all, let's, let's, let's talk about the big picture a little bit. Um, it's never good to have fatality, um, especially when self-driven car. Um, and uh, but they, they, the statistics shown that um, today's car, although self-driven car, although still very unsafe, so to speak. On, on the other hand, um, you know, it saves a lot of lives. So, uh, you know, let's say if we cut the the fatality down by by half. It, it, that's 650,000 people every year save their lives. And so I think we ought to focus on making the technology safer than arguing about some kind of a, you know, a, a stopgap solutions for now and so forth. If it takes longer, it takes longer. But you just have to go full steam ahead on the safety and security side. So is the ideal to not have drivers in there at all? To have the systems be safe enough so drivers aren't in there at all? And do you think even if they are supposedly that safe, the driver sh there should be no driver in the car? That do not need human intervention. Yes, I, I will hope that's the case. Can we get there? Yes, it will. It might not be 2020 that everybody dream of, or 2021, 2025. You know, people will talk about that. Uh, that the different manufacturers talk about when they're going to release the car. I think you know we should take our time to get, as a technology sector, should and the automotive sector should take our time to get it right. You also think that there are privacy concerns. Yeah, yeah. So, so one of the argument was doing some monitoring. Um, uh, you know, driver monitoring there. Uh, you know, I, I think that's also a, a, a deep privacy concern. I mean, every time you put data on an accessibility, uh, whether it's on the internet or telematics or whatever it might be, it, it creates that that hole. Um, I mean, it's been <laughs> it's been talked about big time in the last three to six months. I right? and I think that's also a, a, a area of concern. But I'm still back to the original thing. You know, it is a great idea. Is uh, you know, is is a is a when, not a if. Where, where the car will be driven by himself safely. Uh, it would not be zero accidents, but I, we hope that we'll cut down the majority of auto fatality. Okay, so uh, the president of Audi of America, Scott Keogh, had this to say about regulation, which I do want to ask you about. Take a listen. You do need a federal standard because that'll get away from a lot of this each state's coming up with different initiatives and how they work towards it. But clearly, Caution is the name of the game because you're talking about people's yeah. lives. That's what we've always said, and that's what we will continue to say. What would you like to see happen with regulation? I think, I think first of all, um, I'm, I'm a big time making sure the private sectors ourselves regulate ourselves first. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think it's up to us to develop standards that ISO will adopt. Um, you know, uh, uh, standard bodies will adopt. We will self-regulate ourselves first, and then have a, a partnership relationship with the government, like whether it's Department of Transportation or it might be whoever they might the agency is, and to create a standard that establish a minimum safety standard, so so the consumer could trust it. And so that that's what we we like to see happen. So talk to me about BlackBerry's role in this conversation because your software is now installed in 60 million cars, Honda, Subaru, GM, BMW. What's your role here? Well, we provide components, software components, and we used to provide uh, infotainment system. Now we branch into clusters, advanced driver assist, safety stuff, mm -hmm. um, and and that's our role. That's our role. We 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 made the reality. We make the 
connected car and the autonomous car a reality. You know, we help de uh, develop that. What do you think the opportunities are? Because software is presumably only going to become more powerful in cars themselves as this shift happens. Oh, yeah. Um, the opportunity is obviously huge. Um, if you think about, uh, it, this is not only about cars, it's about anything autonomous. You know, this, this is the marriage in the future of analytics, robotics, big cloud, big data, uh, security. Um, you know, we're focused on solving some problems like how do we make sure that the car, when you develop it, is secure leaving the factory? And then how do you make sure the car, while being used, is not being uh, you know, virusly attacked? Right? So, so there are multiple facets of the life cycle uh, that need security and safety. And so I, it's, 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 uh, it's a huge ongoing opportunities. There are so many companies chasing these opportunities, you know, including all the car makers. Do you think we're going to see M&A here? And if so, how? Um, there are a lot of companies, big and small, working on it. Uh, you know, and uh, unavoidably, sometime in the future, uh, that will be, you know, a kind of so-called consolidation of the market. Yes, I, I do see M&A, but I don't think it's as immediate as most people think. I think the tier ones are quite powerful right now, mm -hmm. uh, and they're pretty involved. Are the tier ones, you know, Google and Tesla, or, you know, GM oh. and Ford? Interesting. Uh, no, you, the, the, the traditional tier ones are the Harman, the LG, the Panasonic, the Denso of the world. Um, um, so, uh, by the Bosch, uh, those are the tier one, um, and and is the, gradually the manufacturer themselves starting to become their 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 own tier one in some area. So so that we know, a car, an autonomous car, just a car. We haven't even got into the whole discussion of planes and drones and mm. everything else. Just a car is hundred million lines of code. Humongous, and and so this is a computer on wheels, um, you know, um, on the move. Maybe that's a better way to say. It. So, if a company is to to win or to dominate, I mean, who has a better chance, the tech giants or the car manufacturers? I still believe it's the well. I would like to see a collaboration, but it's going to be the car manufacturer will have a big big say in it. All right. While you're here, I have to ask: any updates on your lawsuits, uh, Facebook and Snap? You've sued them for infringing on your messaging patents. Well, Are number we one, you want, <laughs> number one, you know that I can't comment on, on ongoing lawsuit, and number two, all these things takes a very long time. Okay.